Welcome back everyone, it's good to have you here. So today I have a question from Haru Nagasaki. It says, when I see your video, sometimes you say the image is boring. What is the difference between a wow image versus a boring image? Number two, is selling, in selling your image, is there any trend or tendency of what type of image is well accepted or the viewers like? Any points in common between these images? So basically, what kind of images do people like and are there any correlations between what they like in one image versus another image and can you kind of group that together? So I think that's the question. And then number three, when you shoot a famous spot when not backpacking, I always encounter many photographers shooting it in the same spot, which ends up creating the same composition for everyone. Comp from competitiveness point of view, how do you add uniqueness in your image? I would like to invite your advice. That's all for now. All right. Those are great questions, Haru, and I think they all really go together. So there's a few different paths that you have to decide to take here. Um, and I think the paths will unveil themselves to you the more and more you shoot and get into photography. So when I first got into photography, probably about 10 years ago now, at first I went into all the popular locations. There's some snow seeping into my snow seat here. Gotta get it out. So I first went to all the popular locations. I wasn't into backpacking. I did some day hikes and I shot the exact same compositions that everybody else shot. And I also was really worried about how many people liked my images or how much social media interaction that I got with these images. So I was aiming to please others and the things that seemed to get the most likes and the most people that wanted to view the photos were the same popular spots again and again. So after I did that for about a year and a half or two years, I became very bored because it wasn't any fun after I had learned the basics of camera technique to go out to these same popular spots and shoot the same compositions again and again. So what I found is that those locations were great for learning because you had a good composition you could go to shoot and that's already hard enough to dial in the composition. So while learning camera technique, it's great if you can go to these popular spots if you want to. If you don't have the desire to, then I'll talk about that in the second part. But if you want to, it's great to have a composition laid out for you so you can practice your camera technique and your photo editing skills at first because that takes the composition out of the game. You don't have to worry about it. But what I found is that after I got really good at camera technique and photo editing, which I'm always still progressing at those, but when you first start, you're like a slope like this learning. And then as you get better and better, the slope starts to get a little bit more and more shallow. So once you get past that initial slope of learning, at least I found personally that I was really bored going to the hot spots. So I said, how can I once again get the feeling back that I had when I first started shooting? I was really excited to go out and I'd never seen the area before. And I had all these ideas of what I wanted to do. So I said, okay, well a good way to do that would be to get out into wilderness landscapes because there's nobody shooting out in those areas because you have to backpack in. And I also, at the same time, started getting into backpacking. So I found how well landscape photography and backpacking meshed together. And when I started doing that and I went out on my first backpacking trip with my camera and I had to find my own compositions, I found how much harder that was, but how much more excited I was about the whole adventure and how much more proud I was of the images when I got home. Because what I found is that when you go out on these trips in the wilderness and you don't know what you're gonna come in contact with as far as shooting scenarios or compositions because you've never seen images from the place. When you do that, it takes a lot more time and effort in finding the compositions. And then it's already hard enough to get good light, even in an area that popular uh, popular uh, shooters go to all the time or people that always go to, like the hotspots. It's hard enough to get good light there, but getting a good composition out here and getting good light is extremely hard. So the whole process is so much more enjoyable for me now because I have to work so much harder all along the way from planning the trip to going out there to getting the shots, to finding the compositions, to finding good weather with good light, and then getting home and editing those images after the trip. And I like the entire process of that, where I found the process of going to the hot spots or the popular spots was really boring because all of that process that I just laid out was already done for me. And it took all the problem solving and the creativity and the constant push to get better for yourself out of the equation. So. What you're going to find here, at least what I found, is the more and more you shoot spots that nobody goes to, the less and less 
you will care about what other people think about your images. Those seem to come together. And it seems that as you progress in photography, at least for me and the friends that I grew up shooting with, at least four or five of them, at first we all cared about what people thought about our images. And then we started shooting different stuff that we created through our own compositions and our own trips. And we tended to get less and less caring and posting on social media and worrying about what people thought of the images as we got more and more into the actual art of photography and creating images. So maybe that's the transition that everybody takes. I see a lot of guys that have been shooting for 30 and 40 years and they don't care at all about having viewers view their images or getting an interaction on social media. But if you go to their website, they have a vast array of fantastic images that have just come from spending years traveling into wilderness areas and taking images that way. So maybe at least what I've found is that a lot of things that are popular online in so-called pop culture right now with photographers and the style of photography with hot spots and the processing styles of images that seems to, everybody seems to copy specific styles of images. So like one style will come up where everything's really dreamy and glowy. And I used to do the same stuff when I started out. And then everybody will copy that same style of image and do it. But it never happens that Create it, new creative things will come out of that. New creative things come out of jamming your head and banging it up against the wall and saying, why can't I do this? And there's no path laid out in front of you to do it. So it's a lot harder to do. So anything that's going to be creative and that's going to drive the next generation of people to want to create images like yours and get popularity over the long term, maybe not short term social media likes, but long term portfolio building where you have a really nice broad array of images at the end of your career. Doing that is going to take charting your own path and charting your own path where people haven't done before, whether it be as your own path as far as composition, as far as processing style, as far as shooting technique or anything else that you have to create and learn for yourself. And you have to kind of break the trail ahead and show people that path. Anything that's like that is going to be extremely creative, but it's also extremely hard to do. So you're not going to find the pop culture or so-called masses, whatever you would like to call it, doing it. Because most things that take long-term dedication, meaning like five years plus, aiming at the same goals, striving towards the same things, and then changing them as you see fit. But most thing that, things that take that kind of dedication and planning, most people aren't going to do. So once you decide that you are going to do those things, after you do it for five or ten years, you will find yourself in a place that most other people aren't. And it's not that you're putting yourself above those people, but your work will look much different than the pop culture or the masses because you've created this own style that's all your own that hasn't been feeding off of what everybody else is doing. And I think that's where true creativity comes from. And that's where you see people that become well-known, but not well-known because they're popular on Instagram or they have large follower accounts, but well-known because people respect their mindset and people respect their art and people usually find out about these people slowly and over time. And if you think about it, if a photographer's around for 40 years putting new compositions out on his portfolio and he's not posting on social media, which is fine if you want to, but he's only creating art and he's worried about devoting all of his time, not to getting people to view his stuff, but to create the best art possible. If you do that, I think people aren't gonna find you as quickly because you're not putting out this mass marketing media agenda, but you're taking all your time and you're devoting it to your art. But when somebody does find you, your work is going to be so much different than everybody else's as far as the mass population, that once people find you, they'll stick with you and they'll really follow along with what you're doing. And then you can build a tribe of people that really like what you're creating. So you might not see overnight success that way. It might take you 10 years or more to see any success at all. But at least you know that you're gonna have the long-term success because you're building new ideas and you're thinking to yourself, how can I change this and make it better from what I could previously do? And are there any ways out there that I could make my photos stand apart from other people's? You can always look into ways like coming out in the wilderness or going to places that you don't see online or just taking a hike down a random road. Like I'll drive forest roads out in the wilderness and if I see a random trail or a ridge line, I'll just climb up on the ridge line and see what it looks like because most of the time people don't go to those places and you'll find all these things that are new adventures to you. And for me that really stimulates the entire learning process and the creative process and makes me want to progress my knowledge and art faster than just copycatting a bunch of other images on the internet. But I think that 
is a whole progression in photography. And I think some people get stuck in the endorphin and the brain chemical transaction that takes place when you get likes and followers online and how good it feels just shortly, they get stuck in that cycle forever. And it's fine if you wanna use Instagram or social media to promote your work. But I think the key is, is to stay true to what you wanna create and have this long-term idea of what you wanna create. And even if people don't like it at first, keep refining your process and refining your art until it gets better and better and better. And eventually, when it's good enough, even if it's not like all the others in the masses, there will be a group of people that slowly find it and follow it. And that group of people will become larger and larger. And you will slowly amass a following of people that you can teach and then you can help and then you can show a new path. And then they can take that path that you led for them and then they can branch off in their own new creative paths. And that's how I think over time, societies progress with technology and art and ideas. And I think what really impedes technology and art and ideas from moving faster to a better place is people just copying the same things over and over again. Because what we're starting to notice now is that computer algorithms can take the place of any person that's doing a job that is repetitive once, twice, three times, again and again. Tech companies are slowly outsourcing all these repetitive jobs to machines and robots and algorithms. So anything that is not new, anything that is not creative or anything that is not putting something out into the world that will make people think a different way is going to have a lot less value and you're starting to notice that with Instagram and social media as more and more people get on there over time it's just a flooded market of all really highly saturated images I used to do that I think it's just the progression images of the same spots I used to do that as well just a progression towards what you want to do I'm not saying these things are wrong I'm just saying don't get stuck in that place of repeating what everybody else does because when that happens things get stagnant and I guarantee within five years you will see artificial intelligence at a small scale that can create images that look just like the popular hotspots and you didn't even have to take the image you could just say I want an image of this place with sunrise or sunset and this kind of light and from all the images on Google the algorithm can just pull off billions of images and say okay well I can create that for you because at a pixel level I know on average what all these images look like so that kind of thing is coming and Anything that computers can take over, they will. But I think a great way to bypass that, to bypass the stagnation of creativity and people doing the same stuff, which eventually gets copied by algorithms, a way to make sure that you're not in that thing and you'll be able to survive and do well long-term in your art and photography is to number one, stay true to what you wanna create, even if it's not currently popular and constantly progress your skills and make sure that your skills are in line with what you want to create and then if other people say to you well that you're doing it wrong or that's wrong you can say okay well lay out the logic for me of why I'm doing it wrong or how I'm doing it wrong always ask for the path when somebody online says something to you generally they haven't really thought into it they're just spouting out anger or words or something else that they haven't thought through the step-by-step -step process so if you want to engage with that that's fine, but make sure they're telling you information and they can give you a logical step-by-step -step reason that they're giving you that information. But back to the creativity thing. I think a good way to, you could say, make your images look unique or have people look at your images and just stop and be like, oh man, I haven't seen that before. That's a really cool way of doing it. Is staying true to yourself, constantly working on your skills, devoting the least time possible to social media and getting likes and taking that time and devoting it towards getting you to where you want to go and you need to have an idea of where you want to go and have this mental picture in your head of what you want your final images to look like. Do you want to shoot in the mountains, the deserts, the rivers, the forests and streams? Do you want to shoot it all? Do you want to pick a place on the map and just go backpacking there and create, capture images from there? All these things are things that almost all of us are able to do unless we're somehow physically not. I feel bad if you're physically not. I'm sorry if you're not. But if you are, you can learn the skills to do that and you can level yourself up. Because six years ago now, I didn't know anything about backpacking or landscape photography out in the wild. But I devoted all my time and energy to learning it. So now that I feel like I'm an expert at these things, an expert with a lot of stuff to learn, but a low level expert that's getting better and better. So I think there's a lot of people that have their attention in the wrong places right now because the social media and internet companies have tied dopamine and feel good and addiction 
that we're already subscribed to into their actual platform. So people get addicted to these platforms, actually addicted through dopamine. And instead, the hard route that doesn't come with very that doesn't come with dopamine spikes very often is designing your own route and being creative and failing consistently because you're trying new things. And that route is the long hard route, but I think if you spend your life taking that route instead, at the end of your career or even during your career, you will find out that you're having a lot more fun, that you're learning a lot more, that you're very well educated about what you're trying to do, that you become an expert at it, and that eventually, after a while, you'll start to create images that you're really proud of and that really stand out. But that is the long route, that is the hard route, and then there's the lots of attention, publicity, and social media route, which time is zero sum on this planet. So if you're a single photographer, you have a business that's just you, or you don't have a business at all, and you're just trying to get better at photography, any time you devote to marketing your work is taken away from actually improving your work. So I think a lot of people put 80% of their work in marketing and 20% of the work in getting better. But if you switched it around to 80% in getting better and 20% in marketing, over the long run, people will just see your work because you're devoting all of it to getting better and really good images just stand out well. We got some freezing rain out here, about to retire to the tent. But I could talk on this stuff for a long period of time because I think it's very important to think through how people perceive reality because the internet feels like everybody's on there and everybody's thinking these things. But there's a lot of people that aren't on the internet every day, that aren't constantly publishing their work, that are working on the nuts and bolts of what makes them better. And you don't hear from these people in the public mass media sphere. So you don't really think they're popular or they're around. But oftentimes they have large followings of people that really love their style of work, but they've just grown these followings organically over long, long periods of time because they're devoting all their time not to marketing, but to making their skills better. And when you make your skills better all the time, your work gets better exponentially faster than it would if you're working all your time to mass media, just produce work and show people the, po the popular hotspots. So I think I've rambled enough on this topic. I hope you kind of see where I'm going with this. It's a hard choice that you'll have to make. It's going to be very hard to constantly market your work and make it popular and also get better at your actual skills at the fastest rate possible. So I think you have to choose where you want to allot your time. You can do both, but if you want to get better faster, allot all your time to thinking what you really want to get better at, what you want to produce in five years, what you want to produce in 10 years. Make an action plan and then start getting after it and devote all your time to that specific thing. I wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. Right now, if you join my email list, I have a 10-day free trial, which gives you unlimited access to all of my photography courses. Now, these courses teach every single technique that I use as a full-time wilderness photographer. So you'll learn camera technique, you'll learn photo editing, photo organization, composition, how to find shots in the field. You'll be able to access and watch dozens of my expeditions out into the wilderness where I take these photos and teach you how to create them from start to finish. I designed this school to be the perfect learning experience, something that I wish would have existed when I started wilderness photography, landscape photography, and outdoor photography 10 years ago. So if you'd like to join my email list, you'll get this 10-day free trial. You'll also get a bunch of other good stuff, including access to my PDF library, which includes all of my photography guides, which you can take out in the field to shoot with you. Check out the link down below this video to join and sign up. You can cancel anytime. I'll never hold your email address hostage. I want to provide you with the best learning experience possible. Now let's get back to the video.